Hi there, DCOMP here. Um, I just want to run through some little hints and tips uh, with regards to testing and using thermal disinfectors within dentistry. So in England and Wales, they're not mandatory, they are best practice. However, we should be perceived as working towards uh, the plan to install a thermal disinfector within our practices. Within Scotland and Northern Ireland, they are mandatory. Uh, when we have a washer disinfector, uh, these do eliminate the uh, risk of sharps injuries and they almost eliminate any need for manual cleaning whatsoever. So with the instruments that are used within clinic, they bypass any manual side and just enter straight into the washer. So that minimizes the risk to uh, dental members of staff. Um, when we use the washer, it's important that we do follow the manufacturer's guidance with regards to loading of the washer. We don't overload it. It's a bit like a dishwasher at home. We don't want to overload the washer because this will um, this will reduce the uh, the washing ability of that uh, of that thermal disinfector as well. Uh, it's important that we don't put sterilisation trays in there, uh, the perforated trays. Um, these will uh, inhibit the flow of water within the washer and they will reduce the pressure and more than likely you'll get an error on the washer disinfector. Uh, with regards to some testing, um, on a weekly basis we should be doing the protein residue test just to detect any uh, residual protein left on a random instrument. Uh, only needs to be done on one instrument uh, as this will give us an idea as to the state of the rest of the load because it's a consistent, uh, reliable system. Uh, but that should be uh, that should be carried out. Don't need to keep the tests at the end of the week. They just need to be recorded in a logbook. Uh, the test that's used, the batch number of the test, the expiry date of the test, and whether it passed or failed. On a quarterly basis, we should be doing the cleaning efficacy test using all the traditional soil test using a chemical efficacy indicator and a process challenge device. Uh, and this will indicate uh, and show us the effectiveness of the uh, thermal disinfectors cleaning cycle. Uh, those tests do need to be kept uh, for a minimum of two years in a logbook. Um, follow the manufacturer's guidance with regards to the frequency of that test because some manufacturers do state monthly, uh, some do state quarterly. The, the EN uh, standard, the European norm standard is a quarterly test. However, always follow the manufacturer's guidance for it. Okay. Uh, also make sure that you are using the correct detergent in the washer disinfector as dictated by the manufacturer as well. It's important with regards to the detergent uh, that uh, you are following the manufacturer's guidance because those detergents would have been validated in that washer. Uh, if we use a detergent that's not validated in that washer, then it could temporarily void the cycle. Um, and uh, at the end of the day, we're not following manufacturer's guidance for it. So that needs to be done. On an annual basis, the washer disinfectors will be uh, serviced, uh, either X a number of cycles or annually, whichever comes sooner. And they need to be validated as well in accordance with the manufacturer's guidance. And these would normally be carried out by your service engineer, whoever your service level agreement is with, uh, whichever, whichever engineer. So uh, that's all we need to do for the washer disinfector. Um, I'll put some more handy hints and tips up there um, for sterilization and for ultrasonic baths. But uh, if you have any questions or you have any um, uh, burning, burning need for anything, please drop me a line, uh, visit the website and um, all my contact details are on there and um, I'll more than happily help you. Uh, stay safe, everybody, and um, take care. Thanks very much. Bye.